Hello, hello. Good morning, O'Neill. I hope everyone's having an amazing day. I hope you had a fantastic three-day weekend um, in remembrance of Martin Luther King Day on Monday. We did not have school. Um, and then um, we're back here. I know some of us are at school on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, and some of us are in school on Thursdays and Fridays. And I'm so excited that you are here. It was wonderful seeing all your smiling faces. You know, we had a little hiccups with some busing and different things like that, but it will smooth out and we will all be here and we'll be all ready. Everyone was staying safe, masks on, washing hands, staying six feet apart. I was so proud of you and I can't wait for us to continue this year. Um, and uh, just as a reminder to all students, um, if you're at a distance or um, here at school, we, we are starting at 8.30. You got to be on at 8.30. You got to be here at 8.30, ready to learn. We don't have a whole lot of time in our day to get stuff done, and we want to teach you. We want you to learn. And so please make sure you are online or here at school by 8.30 so we can just jump right in and get to teaching and you can get to learning. <laughs> All right, well, I have a really um, sweet book for you today. It's called Each Kindness by Jacqueline Woodson. And um, when, when I think of Martin Luther King, I think about how he strived for everyone to be kind. Um, not just nice to each other, but kind, truly understanding someone else's point of view, truly understanding how to make someone feel better while also doing the same for yourself. And when we think of, of civil rights and we think of everyone, um, you know, having that dream come true, it really a lot of times comes down to kindness, the kind words that we say, the kind actions that we have. And so um, this is a beautiful story, each kindness, and um, it, it goes right with that, that theme. All right, so here we go. That winter, snow fell on everything, turning the world a bright, brilliant white. One morning, as we settled into our seats, the classroom door opened and the principal came in. She had a girl with her and she said to us, this is Maya. Maya looked down at the floor I think I heard her whisper, hello. As we stared at her, her coat was open and the clothes beneath it looked old and ragged. Her shoes were spring shoes, not meant for the snow. A strap on one of them had broken. Our teacher, Miss Albert said, say good morning to our new student but most of us were silent. The only empty seat was next to me. That's where our teacher put Maya. And on that first day, Maya turned to me and smiled, but I didn't smile back. I moved my chair, myself and my books a little farther away from her. When she looked my way, I turned to the window and stared out at the snow. And every day after that, when Maya came into the classroom, I looked away and didn't smile back. Mm. A smile brightens everybody's day. Mm. My best friends that year were Kendra and Sophie. At lunchtime, we walked around the schoolyard, our fingers laced together, whispering secrets into each other's ears. Sounds pretty familiar. One day while we were near the slide, 
Maya came over to us. She held open her hand to show us the shiny jacks and a tiny red ball she'd gotten for her birthday. It's a high bouncer, she said, but none of us wanted to play. So Maya played the game against herself. Have you ever seen that? Have you ever seen somebody playing by themselves? Hmm. I wonder what they could have done instead. That afternoon, when we got into the classroom, Maya whispered to me, bet you can't guess who the new Jack's champion of the world is. Behind me, Andrew whispered, Chloe's got a new friend. Chloe's got a new friend. She's not my friend, I whispered back. Hmm. The weeks passed. Every day we whispered about Maya, laughing at her clothes, her shoes, the strange food she brought for lunch. Some days Maya held out her hand to show us what she had brought to school. A deck of cards, pickup sticks, a small tattered doll. Whenever she asked us to play, we said no. Mm. That hurts. The days grew warmer and warmer. The pond thawed, grass began growing where snow had once been. One day, Maya came to school wearing a pretty dress and fancy shoes. But the shoes and the dress looked like they'd belong to another girl before Maya. There ain't nothing wrong with secondhand stuff. I wear secondhand stuff. I have a new name for her, Kendra whispered. Never knew. Everything she has comes from a secondhand store. We all laughed. Maya stood by the fence. She was holding a jump rope, but did not come over to ask us if we wanted to play. After a while, she folded it, doubled, rolled the ends around each hand and started jumping. She jumped around the whole schoolyard without stopping. She didn't look up once, just jumped and jumped and jumped. Mm. It would have been fun to play double dutch instead of jumping by herself. The next day, Maya's seat was empty. In class that morning, we were talking about kindness. Miss Albert had brought a big bowl into class and filled it with water. We all gathered around her desk and watched her drop a small stone into it. Tiny waves rippled out, away from the stone. This is what kindness does, Miss Albert said. Each little thing we do goes out like a ripple into the world. Then Miss Albert asked us each to drop the stone as we told her what kind things we had done. Joseph had held the door for his grandmother. Kendra helped change her baby brother's diaper. Even mean old Andrew had done something. I carried the teacher's books up the stairs, he said. And Miss Albert said it was true. I stood there holding Miss Albert's rock in my hand, silent. Even small things count, Miss Albert said gently, but I couldn't think of anything and passed the stone. Mm, even small things count, even a smile. And even with our masks, we can smile with our eyes. Maya didn't come to school the next day or the day after that. Each morning I walked to school slowly, hoping this would be the day Maya returned and she'd look up at me and smile. I promised myself this would be the day I smiled back. Each kindness, Miss Albert had said, makes the whole world 
a little bit better. But Maya's seat remained empty. And one day, Miss Albert announced to the class that Maya wouldn't be coming back. Her family had to move away, Miss Albert said. And she told us to take out our notebooks. It was time for spelling. That afternoon, I walked home alone. When I reached the pond, my throat filled with all the things I wished I would have said to Maya. Each kindness I had never shown. I threw a small st I threw small stones into it over and over, watching the way the water rippled out and away, out and away. Like each kindness done and not done, like every girl somewhere holding a small gift out to somebody and that someone turning away from it. I watched the water ripple as the sun set through the maples and the chance of a kindness with Maya becoming more and more forever gone. Uh -uh. Mm. That makes me think, don't wait till it's too late to show the kindness. Don't wait till it's too late to tell somebody you love them and, and that you care about them. We need to be kind to each other. We need to show each other that we matter to each other. <laughs> no matter who we are, where we come from, if we're young, old, black, white, Asian, Hispanic, whatever, we can show kindness to each other. And that's what I feel Dr. King's dream was about, that kindness. And I hope you can continue to be kind to each other here at school, at home with your siblings or your parents, and just around the streets in our community. And I hope you have a terrific Tuesday.